Well, good day to all. Current reporting is reporting that Israel has joined the Syrian conflict and fired a missile across the border. In case you haven't been paying attention or heard, let's go through this article and discern truth from fiction. As you can see, this is by Reuters. It says the military fired into Syria, and it'd be the first time they've been in this fighting. They fired it as a warning shot on Sunday after a stray mortar from Syria hit a military post in the Golan Heights, which they captured from Syria in the 67 war and annexed it. No damage or injuries were reported inside Israel. Uh, a string of mortar shells have struck the Golan Heights during the Civil War. They view, that, they view this fire as accidental, but warn that it holds them responsible. This has happened as Syrian opposition groups meeting in the Qatari capital Doha signed an initial agreement to form a new coalition of forces fighting to end the rule of Assad. Now you got a new little group formed. Getting all kinds of little picking and choosing sides and stuff, aren't we? An initial deal has been signed. The evening session will be for electing the president of the body and his deputy, Ali Sedradin al-Bayani, a Muslim, a Muslim Brotherhood delegate. Here we go with the Muslim Brotherhood again. Worked out good in Egypt, huh? Why don't you ask them people if the Muslim Brotherhood worked out good up there? The new body made up of groups inside and outside Syria. Read into that. Groups inside Syria and outside Syria would be called the Syrian National Coalition for Opposition and Revolutionary Forces. The group's leader, once it is chosen, will automatically become the focal point for opposition activities. The U.S. diplomats and officials from Qatar, which has bankrolled opposition to Assad and played a major role in Arab diplomacy against him, have prodded the players over the past week to come to an arrangement. And then it is talking about all the people in this little video had to have fled the fighting. The parties were close to a deal in the early hours of Sunday after Qatari and United Arab Emirates pressed them to agree. But it appeared to fall through when the meeting broke up at 3 a.m. The Syrian National Council, which has led overseas activities, over the past year had lost the confidence of Washington and other powers who saw it as ineffective and riven with personal disputes. The new plan involves a 55 or 60 member assembly alongside a military council including rebel groups such as the Free Syrian Army and a judicial council that will seek to obtain international recognition as the legitimate representative of the Syrian people and form a 10 member gover government in waiting. At the talks in Doha, bringing together various opposition groups, the SNC, the Syrian National Council, had been concerned at being sidelined in the wider body, which is a U.S. backed proposal presented by prominent dissident Riyadh Seif. And then we have this nice little video here with Hillary the liar, traitor Clinton, who has never answered the question to this day if she denied the security, the extra detail which was requested for our people at the embassy in Libya who are now all dead, although she wants to take responsibility as being in charge and responsible for people's safety. A source inside the meeting told the Syrian said the Syrian National Council had asked to continue the talks on Sunday but that it would be a last chance suggesting that opposition figures behind the US backed initiative are threatening to go ahead with 
without them. The international backers of the opposition fear the rapidly changing events on the ground could lead to Assad's rule collapsing and jihadist militias seizing the initiative in a power vacuum if no opposition body abroad is in a position to step in immediately. Anti-Assad protester protest erupted nearly one year eight months ago, meeting a violent response which led to a conflict that has cost more than 38,000 lives and threats to spill into neighboring countries. So there is the latest. Now, this one here has no business even having a position. Let's think about this woman. She was the wife of a president who got on television and lied. What is to like about a liar? People that like Clinton you want to strip out what he, what kind of person he really was and the things that he was doing that they never publicized until he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar or should I say a body part where it didn't belong. And you want to say he did a good job and that had nothing to do with blah blah blah. Yes it has everything to do with it. It's ethics and morals. It's trust and truth. He lied. His wife at that time was just a lowly wife of a president. So, what qualified a lowly wife of a president to then become a, sen or a senator from New York? Anything? Anything at all? And then we jump from senator of New York the Secretary of State. So as you can see, this woman only truly in truth got anywhere that she got because she was bought into it because the hubby used to be the president. So now she's just a stick figurehead with a name. Thank God she never became president. It is sad that she now holds the current title as she does. She is worthless, and every time she looks into that camera, she is lying to us all. The truth has not been told about Benghazi. The strings are being pulled to remove Assad. Like I've said a million times before in the videos that I've made, scumbag rulers are just that, scumbag rulers. But it's their rule and their country, and we don't like what they're doing. But there are worse than they, and that is what they're doing. They're removing the ones that they don't want anymore because they're not doing what they want. And they're going to put scum in there worse than what they are. And they're going to put blame of all this killing and stuff on the people they're trying to remove. Yes, there is death occurring in this, in this war. But the people that want to go in there with the forces that they have, their little ragtag bag of Al-Qaeda and Taliban, and you'll have some regular people that are duped into joining with them. They don't understand that the, the, the forces that are fighting against Assad's military, they don't care who they're killing either. You know, you get a little few snippets of a video on TV from from certain segments of the population that talk, and we still don't get the truth. We still don't get the whole story. It is such a intertwined, totally screwed up situation there, and we're all the way on the other side of the world. Though there is a reason they want to take him out. And it has nothing to do with making that place better for its people. There is an alternative, and they know the ultimate goal of why. And they need to get the, all the chess pieces in place for the plan that they've got. I've showed you on the map before where they played hopscotch and just went from 
Country to country to country to country to country to country with regime overthrow. It's the scumbags that are doing the overthrow and that have even a worse plan in place they want in place than the rulers that they've overthrown and killed or ran out. But we have to be very careful with what we read and see and believe. And you have to put some thought into it. A lot of people are against Jews. You're on the wrong side of the fence, I'm sorry. You know, somebody sent me a, a video which was ridiculous. It was nothing but a hate Islam video talking about the Jews being bad, they're murderers, Jesus was just a man, he wasn't the son of, of God blah 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 I tried to tell you before when it comes to your judgment you don't get a second chance when you've already died and you're in the hereafter you get judged upon what you believe what was your deeds everything I've explained and the things that the good people already know there are no second chances later your chance is right now so don't blow it you know, get out of your little video games. Do some work. Quit always being the anti. Stop believing in anti this and anti that. Maybe it fascinates you more. But that is your problem. You need to dig yourself out of the ruts that you're in and find the truth. You need to quit reading all the stuff that that you think debunks the truth. If you spend as much time reading about the real God and Jesus and Christianity as you do about anything else that tries to debunk it, then maybe you would find the truth. But you're not going to find it where you're at. I'm not going to mention any names. If you're watching my video, you know who, who you are. And I know who you are. And I'll watch about 15 seconds, and once they start ripping the Jews and, and Jesus, well, I'll cut it off, throw it in the trash. I've done, studied world religions. <clears throat> you know, you should try write, reading the Koran and passages from it, and you'll find some truly astounding uh passages that just don't make sense that uh, that would be something that a, a loving God would would want people to do yeah it's got some good peaceful stuff in it here you know throughout it but then all of a sudden there'll be stuff crop up and it just blows your mind on what it says so if you depend on everybody else to make little videos to pump out the anti sentiment against Christianity and you're not looking at the actual stuff and reading it yourself and figuring out things then you're lost so it's up to you people can't always dig you out of a hole you gotta do some work yourself so be aware at least a warning shot's been fired across the bow they are surrounded by their enemies and they are going to protect themselves and this country will never ever ever be taken again by anyone that is God's promise to them who are his people he will protect them so peace be unto all of you hope you have a good weekend pray for the People still affected with the loss of power and the food and the hard situation in Storm Sandy as well as all over the world. Keep your head up. There's plenty to see when you look at the night sky. I'll speak to all of you real soon. Talk to you soon. God bless.